Bootleg Cat Podcast, man. We got the homie Jay Stone in here. Welcome. What's up? What's up? What's up, man? What's up, Kev? Hey, yo, we chilling, man. Listen, to your new album, uh, The Definition of Pain, is, uh, is, is well, look, what's today? It's, it, we, we, this is going to release when this, the album is out. All right, bet. So the album is out. Um, yeah. A great body of work, man. You know, I got the, appreciate you sending it over early so I could tap in with it, man. Definitely a, a very personal project, I feel like. Um, obviously, with the title, man, what, what, kind of give us a little window into your thought process behind naming the album, what you, what you named it. I mean, you know, um, you know, Nip really gave it these titles. You know what I'm saying? With the definition of loyalty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, I let him hear a lot of songs and shit before I even dropped the definition of loyalty. And bro was like, man, just based on the stories and, you know what I'm saying? You giving the G codes on shit and, you know what I'm saying? He's like, man, your album should be called the definition of loyalty. You know what I'm saying? Because what I'm getting from these records is like loyalty. Right, 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 and right. Shit like that, you feel me? And he like, man, your next album should be the definition of. Of something else. You know what I'm saying? Pain, sacrifice, mm. success. You know what I'm saying? I just got to start thinking about all that shit. And I'm like, that's a nigga life right there, though, if you think about it. Yeah, you uh, you know, early on in the project, you're talking, you know, for people who don't know, kind of give us the background. You lost your mom when you were three years old. Mm -hmm. She was young. You, I think you say she was 25. She was, young. she was only 25, you know what I'm saying? And I was only three, so. Your auntie helped raise you? Yeah, my auntie, you know what I'm saying, which was her sister. What happened with, with your mom? Why did she pass so early, if you don't uh, mind sharing, man? Shit, the police, man, you know what I'm saying? That was 1989, you feel what I'm saying? Uh, the crack epidemic was crazy, you know what I'm saying? The, uh, the police force in the streets was crazy, you know what I'm saying? It was just a war on drugs, you feel me? So anybody out, anybody out there that was selling or using, there was a target, period. You know what I'm saying? You go to jail or get killed in the process Damn. of that shit. You feel so me? your mom... Was killed during an interaction with the cops? Yeah, man. Shit, yeah, man. Yeah, she got pulled over on some shit, man. You know what I'm saying? And shit, I don't think she wanted to go to jail. You feel me? She probably talked to him crazy. Probably resisted arrest or some shit. Who knows? Fuck, you feel man. Me? Yeah, it's crazy, too, because, like, we, we think about police brutality and how over the last, like, seven, eight years... It's been so magnified in social media. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's crazy because when you go back and you watch, like, you know, obviously... Not being from LA, I'm from Phoenix, but like watching like, you know, the menace to societies, the boys in the hood, and like the way the cops were portrayed in those movies, it's like almost like it was worse back then. And there was no cameras. Yeah, it was worse back then. Like they fabricated how the police really act in the movies and like 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 they dumbed it down. Like dumb they dumbed that shit down, but they over exaggerated how niggas programmed in the streets. You get what I'm saying? Damn. Like the streets was turned up, like don't get me wrong, but you know, like the movies, they made it a little bit dramatic. You feel what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Um, how, like, you know, at three years old, I don't remember much from three years old, obviously. Um, like, what was that like, though? Kind of like, you know, like how did your family kind of, once you were getting older, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how did they kind of, let you know what happened because that's kind of a, a tough thing to tell a kid on, on yeah, like yo this yeah, is what happened yeah. to your mom hey you so know look so that's why i kept getting like different stories you feel what i'm saying i had to put this shit together because i would ask you know what i'm saying my auntie i asked you know what i'm saying a cousin a uncle or somebody and i get all different stories right you know what i'm saying because you're a kid they want right, they don't want to so tell you no wild shit i'm thinking yeah. they're probably either sparing my feelings or they didn't even know mm. you get what i'm saying so it was just i was getting different stories so like the three different stories I got, I put them all together and you know what I'm saying, came down to the bottom of that shit. And I asked my granddaddy, like, hey man, did this like did this happen? He like, that's exactly what happened. You feel what I'm saying? Shit. Cause they telling me she this, she that. Right, 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 right. You know right. what I'm saying? So once I got the real, my granddaddy was like, Man, that's exactly what happened. Like, you know what I'm saying? So Um, for people who I obviously kind of break down like the section of LA you're from like, you know, I think anybody who who's fans of Nip and are, are already tapped in with your movement kind of already understand where you're from. But, like, for people who are watching this who don't know, kind of, like, give us a background on what, what part of L.A. you're from. I'm from L.A. I'm from South Central. You know what I'm saying? The Crenshaw District. You know what I'm saying? I grew up on 8th Ave. You know what I'm saying? Went to High Park Elementary. Went to Crenshaw High, Washington High. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy because Crenshaw High has become, um like, a cultural, like, 
landmark, you know, and yeah. I know Nip had a lot to do with that. Like even back to when he had uh, those pony shoes and they were the, the blue and the yellow and, you yeah. know. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, hell yeah, man. Crenshaw, Crenshaw itself, man, you know what I'm saying? Got a history within itself, you feel what I'm saying? And, 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 and Nip, and Nip, you know what I'm saying? He just recreated the history of it, you know what I'm saying? We had history then with the Daryl mm -hmm. Strawberry. And, of course. You know what I'm saying? And all that. And, yeah, man, Nip brought that shit back to life, bro, on a worldwide, international scale, like, you know what I'm saying? You say, Nip, uh, you, you got out of jail, and Nip put you on a beat as soon as you got out. As soon as I came on. So give us a little background on your relationship with Nip, how y'all, how you guys originally linked up, and obviously for you to get out of jail and then I'm automatically, you know, be tapped in with the with the with the homie. Like like give us a give us a little yeah, background on that, yeah, man. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, shit. When I got out of jail and shit, man, bro came and picked me up. You know what I'm saying? From jail, he like, bro, man, we could we could do whatever. What I year mean, was like, this? Well, shit. What year wasn't it? Like, he didn't, I didn't right, been right. to jail so many times, you <laughs> yeah, didn't have to come. He's like, every time I've been to yeah, jail. Yeah, you feel me? What year are we talking about, bro? Right, no, which we time? We talking about 2013 when okay. I finally got my shit together. Okay, I okay. came home January 2013 with a plan. With a plan not to go back and just get it. You right, feel right, what I'm right, saying? Right. Stay in the studio, you feel me? So when bro asked me what I wanted to do, he said that I want to go fuck with some hoes, nigga. We go get on a helicopter, cause we go do whatever, you feel what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, take me straight to the studio. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And we went straight to the studio. That's and crazy. And got cracking. He threw me on the beat. We got cracking. And there All it is. get right. Yo, it's crazy because like what you just said is uh, like you've been like you, you've been to jail multiple times and then in 2013 you finally kind of was like, okay. Yeah. I feel like a lot of, a lot of like I have cousins who have been in and out of jail nonstop their whole life, right? And it's yeah. like a lot of it it's hard to get someone to really understand why they they're in that position over and over again. A lot of it has to do with the people you surround yourself with, yeah. the circumstances you choose to be around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause after a while they think your ass dumb. They'd be like, man, this nigga stupid. This nigga like jail or something. Why this nigga keep going back? Yeah. Like what, what, like, I don't understand. I, I would ask you like, what is some advice you give somebody who has that problem? Cause there are people who are good people who just keep getting wrapped up in, you know, that the cycle of just going in and out of jail every couple of years. You know what I'm saying? I mean, to be honest, to be honest with niggas, man, like on some real shit, the system is set up for a nigga to stay in there, to go back. You feel what I'm saying? Like they be pulling 15 year olds over, you know what I'm saying? Fresh yeah. out of school because they want you on probation early. They want to get you on paperwork, get you on probation. Because so then they can just fuck you over every yeah, time. Yeah, you strip for your yeah. rights. So then when you do go to jail... Uh, and you get out and you still on probation or you're on parole, any little thing that you do. Violation. You go, yeah, I could be chilling with my family member and this nigga on probation or parole. But you, you, but you, you know can't be saying? affiliated with those kind yeah, of people. Yeah, bro. Yeah, so that shit right there have your ass back fast. Yeah, you that's. I saying? feel like that's the biggest loophole is like, especially if you're from where you're from, it's like, yo, so you're telling me I can't be around my my cousins or yeah you know or anybody what I mean? that's a, you know what i'm saying affiliate but that's damn near whole la oh you can't live in a gang neighborhood where you want me to that's live the whole la right 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 right. grandma i'm staying in somebody hood auntie staying in somebody hood mom staying in somebody hood you feel what i'm saying help me understand on the on the album you say um baron davis and roddy richard blood cousin yeah real talk so your blood cousins roddy and baron real talk i said i didn't know i didn't even know the roddy and baron were related like that they probably don't even know. They probably didn't even know. You feel what I'm saying? Like it, 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 it just, it just, it just, it, it took a nigga a little bit later to, to to know that part. You feel what I'm saying? Especially Roddy, cause my bro hit me was like, he was like, you know, Roddy, that's our cousin, right? That's a little, you know what I'm saying? It's a little government name. He like, you know, that's. I'm like, yeah, nigga, Roddy is my 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 G pops. My G, no, my uncle is his G pops. Oh that's shit! That's how that go. So you guys are like for real related. That's crazy. You guys that's had my that? dad. That's my dad brother. My dad brother. My dad brother is my uncle, mm. and that's that's that nigga granddaddy. Were you um like like is that something you found out recently or was that? Man, yeah, I just found that out recently, bro. Like you probably been around him and because shit, and his, not even knew his it, right? G -pop, his G pops is my favorite uncle. Oh wow! You know okay. What I'm saying? Like that's that's what's crazy about it. You know Damn. What I'm so you were like you guys, because I'm assuming you're around like with the racks in the middle, 
Uh, well, you, sure. you at the I was sh- in the video. I mean, I, that's video. what I'm saying. I was going to say, obviously, you know, Hit always tells us that story about how how legendary that session was, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, but you didn't even know that was your cousin at the time. <laughs> that shit crazy. That part I didn't know. I found that out later on in the game, though. That's crazy. That's crazy how this shit be, bro. Yeah, super crazy. What about, uh, obviously, Baron Davis, a legendary L.A. figure, one of the more, most slept-on point guards in NBA history. Yeah, man. And he's super tapped in as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, shout-out to B. Diddy. Yeah. Uh, you you guys have a strong relationship? or For sure. Hell yeah. Yeah. I pull up on him faithfully. You know what I'm saying? We have talks. You know what I'm saying? We catch up. We reminisce. How was it nice to ha- when he was on the Clippers? Was that nice to have like man? Hell, that's why that's why I'm a <laughs> hell of a Clipper fan right now. You know what I'm saying? Not right. only am I from LA, but like you know what I'm saying. My cousin Baron played for the Clippers. He was balling out when he was on the Clippers. Yeah, for real. Yeah, that, had that to nigga be. played for the Clippers, the Warriors, you know what the what Hornets, saying? Hornets, Knicks for a little bit, Knicks for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, the Warriors was the wave though when he when they had that uh. That season uh, where they where they upset the one seed, I think it was the they beat the Mavericks in round one. Yeah, it was like Matt Barnes, Barry yeah. Davis, Michael Petrie. That shit yeah. was legendary. Yeah, legendary. that's crazy. So, um, this album, man, super personal album. I feel like, um, you know, you got some records on here that are crazy. You got two Nipsey features on this project that are sp- like very special records. I feel like the LeBron James record with Dom Kennedy is a f- was, is a banger. Yeah. And I feel like the other one is one of the better Nip verses I've heard in a long time, man. Like man, yeah, he yeah, he yeah. got off on that shit. Yeah. Now do you now, like, now go ahead, go ahead. Nah, nah, go ahead. Go I ahead. was gonna say, like, what what is the process of like how many unreleased Nip records do you have? Obviously your home team. So I'm assuming that you you uh you you have some, you know. I know you know Dave East uh who's on your project a couple of times as well. Right. He, he's you know, he's got some shit with him that no one's heard. But like, see, see now that last, you know what I'm saying? That second song you heard, you feel me? That was like an energy that we was in the studio and had did like, cuz went crazy. And then I went crazy. Right. But the verse that I use is not, is not even that verse. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. Bro was like, he said, nigga, everything you said on there was the money. He said, just change the first four bars. He said, you change the first four bars. He said, the rest of that shit is money. So instead of changing the four bars, I just changed the whole verse and just went crazy. Yeah, you sm- you, you spat. Yo, because Nip kicked that thing off man, on fire. Yeah, but we held on to it for a cool minute. Right, 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 right. You know, right, what, right. I'm saying? We ain't, you know what I'm saying? We ain't do shit to it. So after a while, it just started getting outdated. I revamped the beat. And I'm like, man, this shit perfect for the album. Yeah, because I know that Nipsey was like very, uh, like he had an intent when he recorded. It wasn't, like Nipsey wasn't the kind of guy who would like, you know do 150 songs and like you know you know there's those artists that like quantity over quality sometimes yeah. right but i feel like nip everything he did was like very um specific it had purpose it was yeah. like you know like he, so so in your in your estimation like how much nipsey versus records that are you know on hard drive somewhere that we haven't heard yet hey man a lot it's so much music this nigga didn't did, bro. Like you, you, you wouldn't even imagine, bro. It's shit that I haven't even heard. I, when I thought I heard everything, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Like, is there a? Have you heard any like like plans? Because obviously, Pop Smoke passed, and we got a his a crazy album from him after he di- yeah. after he died. And I yeah. think that you know a lot of Nipsey fans are like, I wonder if we're gonna get one more Nipsey project. And I know it's not gonna be as cohesive because you know he's not here to. If if it were to happen. He's not here. It's it's gonna take a lot of production. It's gonna take a lot of you know. Is nah, that you something that's been been discussed? It's gonna, it's gonna it's gonna definitely be another Nip album. You know what I'm saying? But you know, you got to take time with that it's though. It's all man. money in, so you know we ain't gonna put out nothing, Mickey, or do it just exactly. Because, you know what I'm saying? You got, I feel like like you know what I'm saying. Rest in peace, of Pac. I feel like if they would have held on to his music a little bit more. You know what I'm saying, and put it out the right way, it it would have been received different. But the music was still good, and we needed it at that time. So you know, what yeah, I'm they definitely um, like, after after Pac died, I feel like they didn't take their time with putting together those projects as much as they probably could have. Yeah, and Nip had his brand and his image so 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 strong and tight, like 
you can't, you know what I'm saying? You can't do the Pac on them with the Machiavelli 1, mm -hmm. Machiavelli 15. Remember all those CDs, all yeah, them bootlegs? Yeah, Machiavelli 12. <laughs> Nigga. I remember just hearing about all those. Yeah. And then when Napster came out, I was downloading all the fucking Tupac bootlegs off the fucking internet, man. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, because that's I, I do think there is something to be said about, like, with Pac. Like, there was, like, some of those post-death albums that were solid, but some of them just felt like they just kind of kind of threw shit together and it was yeah, like yeah. kind of threw shit together when they could have waited and then there was the one album that had like features with people he probably never would like never really even did a song with bro like, why is tupac know, doing a song with trick daddy and and all like a g-unit and shit like bro like yeah. he didn't even know these cats you know yeah. what i'm saying like and i feel like with with nip it's got to be very you got to take your time if that project happens yeah. everything's got to be super you know i mean the same way he took his time with victory lap yeah and it was a perfect album. For sure. In the same way. You know what I'm saying? So that'd be crazy, though, if we hear that, man. Um, yeah, that'd be crazy. I don't know. I really can't say, but I just... Well, I you just... did say earlier. <laughs> but listen, man, shout out to Nip. I hope I hope we hear... Because, uh, you know, some of these verses that have been coming out, Deep Reverence with Sean was crazy. Uh, the, 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 you know, the, the stuff on your albums, like, there's been some... the the uh obviously the Khaled record was special. Yeah. I'm glad that they that they got to release that, that video. Record. Yeah. Yeah. Nip got a chance to pull up on Khaled at his crib. You know what I'm saying? They vibed out and knocked that shit out there. You feel me? Uh, I was talking to Dave East, um, and he said that you guys might be doing a, a collab project. Yep. You and Dave East. Yep. We definitely like halfway through an EP. You know what I'm saying? I mean he's on I mean, look, you guys got some great records together yeah. at, at, right now yeah right now yeah, yeah. you heard you heard like two yeah. of them already you for know sure for sure yeah so uh with because i know east and nip had talked about working together so that's yeah. got to be a very important like uh you know a hey, uh, dave's one of the realest dudes in hip-hop nah, for real just man. a great guy man very dave, genuine dude he's solid bro so you guys he's are halfway solid. through it 100 yeah halfway through and we ready to go man we gonna we, we ready to just finish this shit get it going you know what I'm saying? Him and Nip obviously was working on one. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, man, we just gonna keep this shit going. Bro. Help me understand the T. Uh, how'd you get T Pain on this album, man? Because I, I, I was just listening when I looking at the track list. I heard T Pain. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, man. T Pain on the album. Shout out to T I though, man. For real, I pulled up on him and we got in the studio. And uh, the producer that produced for uh for for Tip, you know what I'm saying? Had some music for me. Man. Yeah, we he had the T Pain like hook. Yeah, yeah, he been holding on that for me. He like, bro, I've been having this record for you, man. I've been sitting on this record for you. He had hit me in June and told me about it. So did you and have to hit Pain know. to clear it? Obviously, right? Like, of course, yeah. Of and course. and he gave you the blessing. Yeah, yeah, we got the blessings, man. Shout out to Tip, man. So Ti right. helped kind of run that. Come on, man. Hey, that's crazy. Yeah, because it sounded like some vintage, like you know, some like all the above era T Pain. I was like, this shit. I haven't heard Pain get off like this in a minute. Yeah, classic shit. Like I, I feel like um, with this project, you are you're in a really great position to kind of, um, you know, I feel like people kind of associate you as like Nip's homie, right? Yeah, that's my day one. For right, sure. but yeah. I, but I think that this album is like an album that is kind of like it feels like your like your arrival. Where you're, it's like, yeah, that's 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 Jay Stone who happens to be Nipsey's homie. Like, you know, you understand what I'm trying to say? I mean, I kind of get it. Yeah, like yeah. I feel like this album is like a big statement for you as an exactly, artist. Exactly, exactly. Like that, de like I say, like the definition of loyalty was like it was like a demonstration, but this one is like, like nigga, this my stamp right here. Like this shit was for real, and it is for real. I'm here, so get used to me. You feel me? What do you Type like? What, what's your thoughts on um? You know, a lot of these lists have been coming out, and I feel like obviously, LA is always getting overlooked. You know, Head always talks about that. Shout out to Head. Um, a lot of hip hop media is East Coast biased. Um, what is your kind of thought process on where LA hip hop is right now? I mean, shit. I think we're in a good space right now. Everybody doing their shit, man. Shout out everybody on the West that's doing their shit. You know what I'm saying? Lyrically and, you know what I'm saying? Shit. I just feel like, you know, you can say, like, the West need this and the West need that and 
we don't need this and we don't need that. But if shit, if you ask everybody else, bro, on the outside looking in, we looking good. I, I mean, listen, we sounding good. So. I also feel like there's a lot more unity right now in, yeah, in LA be, than yeah, in the past. For sure. With the younger, sure. with the, especially with the younger kids that are doing their thing, you know? For sure. And it could be a lot more. It could be a lot more. That's probably like the only thing that we lack. You feel what I'm saying? Because the South, they go do songs with each other. You know what I'm saying? They go sit in the studio and do 10 records right, a day. Right, right, right. Be like, look, yeah. here's a 21 Savage Offset album. And yeah, it, yeah, exactly. You yeah. feel me? Like, I don't know. I work like that. That's how I work. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't think niggas can get in the studio with me like that. You know what I'm saying? Do you think and, it's and, it's a lot of it is uh is the politics side of LA sometimes just kind of you know not I mean, yeah, of course not, not we that all like, know that not yeah. that somebody f- doesn't fuck with an artist but it's like sometimes it's like look well like you know sometimes the politics kind of get in the in the middle of of certain people collaborating you know what I'm saying definitely like like I remember but that's kind of like everywhere you go now though if you think about it I mean that's just pretty much anywhere in hip hop like in the industry I mean it's to- really out here though for sure. As yeah. far as you know, I'm talking about the street politics, obviously. Yeah, the street politics. Yeah, like because there was, bro. As a as a fan, I was I was always there was like one of the one record I always I one of the one collabs I wanted. I wanted to hear Nipsey and Schoolboy Q on some shit. You know what I'm saying? And you know, obviously, there's no secret if you're from LA as to why that probably didn't happen. It wasn't like there was beef or anything, but I feel like that there's definitely like. You know, with the young kids right now, at least like the one take J's, the AZ Chikes, you know, the um, Shoreline kids, uh, Rucci. Like, it feels like there's just a lot more camaraderie with the younger generation of L.A. right now. And it's just good to see, man. For sure. Yeah. Who? Hell who, yeah. Who were you? Um, you we were talking earlier. You're like, man, I'm a hip hop head. You know, definitely, bro. Because, you know, what I'm saying I was out, out bro. Bro. Growing up in this shit, bro, we had the box. You know what I'm saying? Of course, like, the video channel, the box. Yeah, like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Man. I was exposed to shit like that. You feel the me? The box was crazy. And then, uh, you know, my cousins and shit, you know, they used to always listen to all that 80s rap. You feel me? So I was I was already I was already listening to that shit, bro. What's your, fa- what's your favorite, like, like, give me, like, your top three albums of all time, if you could. And, and, and excluding Victory Lap, because it's got to be in there, I'm assuming. I mean, Victory Lap is just all, you know what I'm saying? That's just up there. You already know. Uh, of course, of but course. Like, you know what I'm saying? My top three. Damn, man. Shit, number one, Me Against the World, Pac. Okay. Um, shit, you can throw, you can throw uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony creeping on the come up or East 99 Eternal in there. Hey. One of them. Talk about language. There. Um, and number three. Shit. Definition of loyalty. <laughs> okay, I see you. You can put you yourself me? in there. Yeah. Yo, it's crazy because I like Bone Thugs was a. Uh, I remember having a uh, creeping on a come up and the Ouija board shit as a yeah, little. Yeah, as a little my shit, bro. As a little kid, that, that shit creeped shit. me out though. You know, because I was like, but I love Bone. Bone creeping on a come up and doggy nah, style bone was hard. But bone like was the hard. T- they like the main reason why I'm rapping right Man. now. Man, and what they what don't saying? get. In, I don't feel like they they don't get talked about enough anymore. Like as far as when we're talking about the all time greatest groups and yeah. shit, like Bones up there, man. Like yeah. they know, up there, everybody know it. They the had whole a run. Run. Like they, they had sold a... millions of records. So Bro, East nineteen ninety nine. Millions of motherfuckers heard it. They Grammys. Knew the lyrics. And they got the Grammys. Come on, man. It ain't. It ain't. It ain't too many motherfuckers. It ain't really too many motherfuckers. Yeah, no, yo, no, Bone, no. Bones, uh, you know, I wish they would have had a longer run for sure. Yeah, a hundred percent. Shout out, yeah. shout out, my and guy. It's fucked up the business side. And yeah, I mean, listen, when you got when shit, you got like, that many people involved in a group, it's hard to you know. Yeah, you got to manage a lot more variables. Yeah, you know, people, yeah. and then and then Crazy Bone started doing solo shit. Lazy Bone dropped a solo album. Then Busy dropped a solo album. It was like, you know, then shit just kind of got. Out of control, I feel like. But shout out to Bone, man. Legendary yeah. group. Shout out to Respect Bone. Respect to them. Man. Yo, look, man. Quick break from the podcast to tell you about Odd Socks. All right. They're our official sponsor. They support what we do here at the Bootleg Kept Podcast. All right. They got them Nickelodeon joints. They got these, uh, yo, shout out to Ghostbusters. I might keep those. Um, anyway, what you got to do is hit that oddsocksofficial.com. If you want to support what I do, the Bootleg Head Podcast, then support our partners, Odd Socks. Go buy some socks, man. Holidays are coming up. Oddsocksofficial.com. Keyword, Bootleg Kev. You're getting 20% off of the most comfortable socks in the world. Shout out to Odd Socks. Um, Is there, obviously, you're, you're probably sitting on a whole lot more music. 
What's the plans for 2021 for you, bro? Shit, man. I don't know what it's going to look like, man. Hopefully they open these doors, man, and we get on the road. You know right. what I'm saying? Get back on this road and shit. If not, bro, I'm back in the studio recreating it, doing another album. You feel me? Just keep keeping it pu- yeah, pushing. Keep, yeah, keeping it pushing. And then whatever happens along the process is going to happen, bro, because I don't know. Right, 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 right. Can you kind of, I was going to ask you, can you kind of give us um, like an update? Obviously, for people who don't know, the, the Marathon Store physical location was was closed, right? Yeah. Um, But you can still go online and support. Definitely and, go online and support and get the merchandise. You know what I'm saying? Marathon.com. Yeah. Marathonclothing.com. Yeah, because yeah. I, it was, you know, after Nip's passing, I just remember like that became, you know, I think it's always going to be a um, a landmark. You know, where people, whoever comes to town, they're going to go and be like, yo, this is where Nipsey's business was. This is where, you know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, where it started, you know what I'm saying? From, the, from ground zero. Like, that was ground zero right there. Yeah, it's crazy because if you, like, you know, through the whole process of him being there, getting kicked out of that area, then to opening the store up, and then to just being everybody's landlord in that motherfucker. Like, Man. It's, 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 it, it was, like, such a dope uh, story, and I think, like, that I don't know what the current you know situation of that uh, center is, but I think that like it's got to be preserved, man. Like, you know, it was. Uh, I think in like twenty or thirty years from now, we're gonna be watching uh, the Nipsey Hustle movie. It might even be ten years from now. Twenty, thirty years from now. That's it, a long ass. It might be time. ten. It might, it might be ten years that's from now. Long ass time. Shit. Who it knows? might be ten years. You know. Definitely. Definitely. It, who's playing? Who's playing Jay Stone in that movie though? Shit, me. <laughs> well, Shit, me, like the younger me, no, I don't know. A, some, what if you got pay, you got pick an actor though? A younger me, somebody, yeah, but me, I definitely go with me. You feel me? But if not, I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of nobody right now. All right, well, listen, the album is out. Um, the definition of pain, man, dope body of work. Is there gonna be? Yo, has LeBron James heard the LeBron James record yet? Yeah, I sent it to him. Did he fuck with it? Yeah, he fuck with it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying he gonna go crazy. He was, he was he was the first person I sent it to right when it was mixed and mastered. I hit him like, yeah. Press play. It on must this. be nice to just be able to hit LeBron James. You yeah, know what bro. That's one hundred for sure. For That's sure. That's motivation. I keep a nigga going too. You feel me? Any other videos? Um, do you have videos in the can for the for the from the videos album? Videos in the cut for sure. What videos are dropping? Shit, I got one with E Forty. I got one with Davies. Another one. Yep, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we crack. Boom. Jay Stone, man. Appreciate you pulling up. Go support the album. The definition of pain is out. Let's go. Yeah. Let's Freestyle go. out right now, too. Actually. Freestyle out right now. Let's go. Let's get it. Boom. Perfect. Boom.